guys, you are welcome to today's class. This is Chemistry Hangout. If you are just watching this YouTube channel for the very first time, this is one of the best channels as far as chemistry content is concerned. So kindly click on the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that when I upload any video, you are going to be notified. I have two very important information today. So if you are writing wired, Take a seat and listen attentively. By the end of this video, I'm going to be giving you what I have for YEG. I have seen, although I have seen some tentative timetable for YEG, though it has not been confirmed, I have not confirmed the authenticity, but I can see a lot of timetable flying around on the internet as far as YEG is concerned. So if you are a YEG student, 2024 YEG student, and you are taking you know, chemistry, you're taking physics, you're taking biology, there's a good news for you. But I'm going to be sharing that at the end of this video. So make sure you watch the video till the end so that you can get the message I have for you. And for Jump by 2024, your exam is in a few days. You know, my prayers are with you. There are a lot of videos on the channel that can help you. A lot of videos you have done that can actually help you. I wish you success. And very important, if you are writing Jump, a lot of people suggested that I teach organic chemistry. And if you agree with me, organic chemistry is not just a one day class. There is no way I'm going to teach organic chemistry just for one video and you understand. And that is the truth. And currently now there is an organic chemistry class going. It's going to, it's going to be for five days. A lot of jam bites are already, you know, they have already keyed into this, to this very particular class. I'm going to drop a link in the comment box section just click the link if you want you know it's going to be a live class it's not a recorded class so you can have you know opportunity to have ask me a lot of questions it has started and you have to be part of it if you are writing jam for this year you have to the part of that organic chemistry class because one of where there is probability you get a lot of questions on organic chemistry that's one of the you know that's one of the widest and the most you know Numerous aspects of chemistry, a lot of questions, organic chemistry, one, two, and we're going to be showing you how to answer that question. So check the comment box section. I'm going to drop a link there. It's going to last for five days. It's an organic chemistry class, and we're going to do that for five days. It has started, and if you are writing job, it's an opportunity for you to check the link, then you click the link, and it tells you what to do. So very important, I'm still going to drop the content for jam by. So if you are doing jam, just check the link, click the link, then it will take you to, you know, where you need to be and you are going to be told what to do to actually join the organic chemistry class. Don't forget, it's going to last for five days and we are starting. So very, very important, if you want to be part of the class, then click the link or if you check my number, my number two is on the screen, you can chat me via that number, that's my WhatsApp number, you can always get me through that. So very, very important, I have seen a lot of Jambites talk about stoichiometry talk about mole don't forget i started a series on mole and if you if you have watched that video you see i didn't do any calculation i just gave a very good background on what mole is and what you really understand by mole and what are the things you need to know about mole so today i'm going to take my time to solve some questions i'm going to take questions from wired questions from jam and i'm going to give some important formula so if you're writing jam you need to pay attention to this so when i give this formula you can apply that check your past question try to apply it you know anyone you cannot actually do yourself you can use the comment box section to tell us how to help you you know will help you i will try as much as possible to reply those comments though most times they are much i try as much as possible to reply them so that i can give you confidence as far as your exam is concerned so if you're writing why just stay on this channel by the end of this video. At the end of this video, I'm going to tell you what to do and how to go about the 2024 YEG practicals. So very quickly, let's consider this. If you remember, so let's talk about the mold concept. And in my last video, if you remember, I said one mold. If you remember, I did something like this after my explanation that one mold is uh, in terms of particles, I said one mole in terms of particle is 6.02 times 10 raised to power 23. I want to believe you remember that. And I said, according to, you know, one mole is still the same thing as the molecular mass. The molecular mass in gram, if you remember. And I said, in terms of molar volume, 
in terms of molar volume, right? It is 22.4 dmq if you want cash flows. I already explained this in the last video. If you have not checked that video, please kindly go and check it. Now, having known this, I want to talk about the formulas. The formulas in mole ratio. That's formulas you need to know, you need to take note when you are solving any mole ratio question or any more concept question or questions on stoichiometry. What are the formulas you need to know? One, you need to know this formula because its mole is equal to mass over molar mass. Please. Very important formula. Formula number one, you need to know when it comes to mole concept of stoichiometry, you have to know this formula. Mole is equal to mass of molar mass. In fact, if you have been watching practicals on my channel, you would have seen me use this practical a lot. So even if you are writing wire, you need to take note of this formula because when it comes to practical, we cannot overemphasize the importance of this. So if you are solving any question on mole concept, please note this. Why from this place, we can derive two other formulas. You don't need to memorize that. By making any one subject of formula, you can get to other formula. If I make mass the subject of formula, it means mass will now be mole times molar mass. So this becomes mass will be equal to mole times molar mass. Right? Mole times molar mass. Very important. Number three, you can make molar mass the subject of formula too. Do you get that? So if you make molar mass the subject of formula, molar mass the subject of formula, we are going to have mass over mole. I want to believe you are together. Yeah, I want to believe we are together. If you make it the subject of formula, we are going to have mass over mole. So, another formula, number four, another formula you need to take note of. Having known mole is equal to mass over molar mass, mass equal to mole times molar mass, molar mass equal to mass over mole, then you need to take note of this formula to amount in moles. Please take note of this. Amount in moles is concentration times volume. Now, please listen to this. Please listen to this and take note of these things I'm saying. Now, if I'm looking for amount in moles, my formula is concentration times volume. Note that. But if your volume is in centimeter cube, please pay attention to this because you know, most times for mole, you have mole to be mole per dm cube. Can you see that? Most times you have mole, mole per DMQ. Now, if your if your volume is now in DMQ, this is the formula you are going to use: concentration times volume. But in some cases, you will see them use formula like amount in moles equal to concentration times volume over one thousand. The reason why they are putting this one thousand is because their volume. Go and check their volume. Their volume is in centimeter cube, so they want to convert the centimeter cube to DMQ, and we know that one DMQ is equal to 1,000 centimeter cube. I don't know if this is square. So they want to convert. So since it, it is in centimeter cube, they want to convert to DM cube, they have to divide by 1,000. But if your volume is already in DM cube, there is no need for you to divide by 1,000. I don't know if this is square. It's just like they get me 25 centimeter cube. Look at that. And this 25 centimeter cube, I need to convert it to DM cube. So I know that my one DM cube, is equal to 1,000 centimeter cube. Do you see that now? So 25 centimeter cube would be x. At the end of the day, you will see that your x will be what? 25 times 1 over 1,000. Do you see that? So you have to divide by 1,000 to convert back to the cube. So note, if you are calculating amount in moles and your volume is in dm cube, you don't need to divide by 1,000. The formula is concentration times volume. That's the formula. But if your volume is a centimeter cube, you have to divide by 1,000 because you want to convert back to what dm cube. Please note that. But the formula is concentration times volume. But the reason why, from experience, for me, the reason why most times I, I write concentration times volume over 1,000 for students is because most times in questions, the volume comes in centimeter cube. You know why? Because most of the apparatus in chemistry laboratory are in centimeter cube. Yes, most of the apparatus, 25 mil, you understand? 25 centimeter cube, 250 centimeter. You have, you have a big car of 250 centimeter cube. You have a big car of, you know, 150 centimeter cube, 500 centimeter cube, you know, like that. So, because in chemistry, most times it is always in centimeter cube because of the apparatus we are using. 
So since we know the volume is in centimeter cube, I need to divide by 1,000 to get dm cube. I hope that's clear. So but check if you're calculating amount in moles. If your volume is in dm cube, you don't need to what? To convert again. I don't know if that is clear. So take note of that. So number five, another formula you need to know is this titration formula, very important. Vb is equal to Na over N. Can you see that? Just if you are taking jam, just know this formula, understand this formula, understand this, understand this, understand this. Then understand the relationship between mole and particles, understand the relationship between mole and mass, understand the relationship between mole and what? And molar volume. If you know all this, understand that one mole is equal to this, one mole is also equal to molecular mass in gram, one mole is also equal to 22.4 dm cube in gas. Then you know this formula. Then 75% of questions on stoichiometry or mole concept in jam in wire you'll be able to solve it so the next you'll be seeing now will be some questions i piled up from different past questions wire jam neko and i'll solve them so that you see how you are actually going to want to solve them so stay tuned the next one you'll be seeing now will be questions that i piled up that i want to solve to show you how to actually apply this formula so thank you Good day everyone, I am Omoto Show Abibola Messi, probably a 100 level biochem student from Kwara State College of Education, Uru. Saying the biggest thank you will not be enough to express my fondness for chemistry hangouts. It has really helped me for a whole lot of revelation in certain topics in chemistry. It helped me in understanding basic, intermediate and advanced topics in chemistry all through my work and jam. So do you have problem understanding certain topics in chemistry? Do you want all phobias for chemistry to fly away? Then the best channel is chemistry hangouts. So subscribe to this channel and you say bye bye to Okay, so you are welcome now. Don't forget if there is need for you to write those formulas, if there is need for you to rewind this video, you know, backward to write down the formulas I gave because I'll be applying some of the formulas now in some of these questions. So these questions are wire questions, necro questions, jam questions. The majority of these questions are jam questions and you will just few few uh wire or necro questions. So I want to show you how do we solve these questions, okay? It is the question they are giving you because stoichiometry questions can come from dif different ways. Yes, questions can come in different ways, and that's just the truth. Stoichiometry, you can have questions in different ways. Okay, now for you to solve questions on, on stoichiometry, I'm still going to do videos even after the Jamba, they are done with their exams. I still, there are some of my students that are writing IBMB, some of them are writing Japan. I'm still going to be uploading videos on this because it is the question that will now determine what formula to apply so you have to be very very cautious you have to you have to be very very attentive now and you have to be very very careful so that you don't use the wrong formula to solve a particular question i hope that is clear so stoichiometry is you know there are a lot of ways you can be given questions that's why i gave those formulas but at least for jambai those formulas will help you but you understanding the question Understanding the, the question gives you an edge to know how to approach it. So read the question, understand what the question is saying. Then some of those formulas are given. Try any one out of them, then we'll see how we're going to get it. So let's see. Look at this. They said 25 centimeter cube of a 0.2 mole per dm cube solution of NO to CO3 requires 20 centimeter cube of a solution of ACL for neutralization. The concentration of ACL is this. Can, can you see the question? Now let's get this right. 25 centimeter cube. Is that not volume? That volume is 0.2 mole per dm cube. This is concentration. Can you see? That's how you fish out what they are giving you. And as a science student, when you see sodium carbonate, you know this, this, this is a base. This is an acid. You can see. That's how you troubleshoot this question. This is a base. This is an acid. Okay? They are giving me this, they are giving me the volume of the base, they are giving me the concentration of the base, good. They are giving me the volume of the acid, they are not telling me to look for the concentration of the acid. So what do I do? I already know my formula, which means the formula I'm going to be applying, out of the formulas I gave you there, is CAVA over CB, VB equals MA over MB. I gave you this formula. 
how do we get that? Concentration of acid, don't forget, concentration of acid, concentration of base. So concentration of acid is what I am looking for. God they said the concentration of ACL. And ACL is an acid. So concentration of acid is what I'm looking for. Volume of acid, this is it already. 20 centimeter cube. Can you see that now? Concentration of base is given already 0.2 mole per dm cube for sodium carbonate. Can you see that? Volume of base is given already. And I need my number of moles of acid to number of moles of base. So what do I do? I need to write the equation of reaction. That's why it is dumb question. I need to write the equation of reaction. So I can write the equation of reaction Na2CO3 plus HCO. As a science student, you know this will give us NaCl plus H2O plus CO2. Because anytime an acid reacts with a charge carbonate, it will liberate carbon dioxide and water. And since this is a neutralization reaction, definitely a salt will be liberated. So, summarily, if you have an acid and a charge carbonate, it will liberate a salt, water, and CO2. That's not all. You have to check the equation. Is it balanced? These are things you do. So, you have to take your time. So, sodium here, you can see. Sodium here is what? It's two. Sodium here is one. So we can apply our two here. So sodium becomes two. Sodium becomes two. Chlorine here is what? It's one. Chlorine here now is two. Can you see? Chlorine here is two. Chlorine here is one. Let me write this. Let's see here. So now put two here. So sodium becomes two. Sodium becomes two. Balance. Chlorine becomes two. Chlorine becomes two. Balance. Hydrogen becomes two. Hydrogen becomes two. Balance. Right? Oxygen becomes one plus two here. Three. Oxygen becomes three here. Balance, carbon is one year, carbon is one. Balance. So the mole of ratio of acid to base. So here we have ratio one to two. One moles of sodium carbonate plus what? Two moles of hydrogen chloride. Can you see that? And you apply this thing here. And you get the answer. Very sharp. So let's apply our formulas now. CA, that's what I'm looking for, times VA, volume of acid, that's 20 over CB, concentration of base. That's 0 0.2 times volume of base, that's 25, equals number of moles of acid, that's 2, number of moles of base, that's 1. Can you see that now? You have got to know your parameter. You have to cross multiply. I'm going to have CA to be this times this. I'm making CA the subject of formula now. So we have 0 0.2 times 25 times 2, then you can divide by 20 times 1. So let's see CA. Let me use my calculator. So that is my calculator now. I will have 0 0.2 times 25 times 2, then divide 20. That's giving me 0 0.5. I see. It's giving me 0 0.5 mole per dm. I see that. Just understand the question and those five formulas I gave you. Just know when to use them. These things are simple. We get that's V. For number one, let's check number two. Look at this. They wrote an equation magnesium plus ACL gives us this and this. Okay, from the equation above, the mass of magnesium required to react with 250 centimeter cube of 0 0.5 ACL. Now, look at that. The mass of magnesium, we are looking for this, right? But they gave us information about this. Can you see that now? They gave us information about this. Okay, so let's see if the equation is balanced first. Very important is the equation balance. Hydrogen here, we have magnesium here, we have ACL, right? So we have magnesium chloride plus hydrogen gas. So the equation is not balanced. You see that now. The equation is not balanced. Because this magnesium reacting with ACL to give magnesium chloride and what and hydrogen gas. So this is two here. So two has to be here. Can you see that? So the equation is what is balanced now. Because you have to be checking all these things. Magnesium is one, magnesium is one, balance. Chlorine is two, chlorine two is two here, balance. Hydrogen is two, hydrogen is two, balance. Now look at this. They asked us to calculate this. Please pay attention to this now. They asked us to calculate this. But we are not giving any information about this except the molar mass. But they give us 250 of ACL, they give us 0.5 of ACL. Have you forgotten that I told you that amount in moles, the formula I gave you, amount in moles, I said is what? Concentration times volume. Do you see that? Where is the concentration here? Is 0 0.5. Can you see that now? Is 0 0.5 is the concentration. Where is the volume here? The volume is 250. Now remember, I said if the volume is a centimeter cube, you have to divide it by what? 
1,000 because you are converting back to DMP. So from here, you can calculate the amount in moles of ACM. So amount of moles, concentration times volume over 1,000, that's what you are using, is 0.5, it's from here. So times, what is the volume? The volume is 250 over what, 1,000. You should now know the reason why I'm dividing by 1,000 because the volume here is in what? It's in centimeter kilogram. Already explained that. So the amount in moles becomes, let's go now, 0.5 times 250, 0.5 times 250, divide 1,000. That will give us 0.125 moles. Now, pay attention to this. If you have not forgotten, 0.125 moles is for ACL. Don't forget the question is not asking you about ACL. The question is actually asking you about what? Magnesium. Can you see? But if you want to give us any information about magnesium, and this BS to geometric constant. So I'm not looking at this as okay. I have gotten moles of of hydro, hydrochloric acid, right? Or hydrogen chloride, right? I've gotten moles for hydrogen chloride now. Okay. So from the equation, I can ask okay, from the equation that is given. From the equation that is given, what happens? One mole of magnesium liberated two moles of ACL, which is there, okay? So, one mole of magnesium gave two moles of ACL. So, is 0.125 mole of ACL will now give what? X. I don't know if this is clear. From the equation, one mole of magnesium here. Give two moles of ACL because they didn't give us anything about this. So we must study the relationship between them to be able to get a value for this that we can work with. I don't know if that is clear. So one mole is gotten from here to two moles of ACL is gotten from here. So if that point one to five mole of ACL, you now give me x of this. So if I cross multiply, I'm going to have two x equals zero point one two five. So I cannot divide both side by two. Then zero point one two five divided by two. You now give me what? 0 0.125 divided by 2. You now give me 0 0.0625. I don't know if this is clear. I don't know if that's clear. One mole of magnesium from here gave two moles of ACL. And don't forget what we got, amount the moles of ACL we got. We said this is 0 0.5. According to the equation here, is 0 0.5 times the 250 here, okay? 250 divide 1000. And that's how we got this is 0 0.125 moles. I want to believe this is correct. So one mole of magnesium gives two moles of ACL from the equation here. So it's 0 0.125 moles of ACL. You know this is my ACL. That's how I'm putting it, the 0 0.125 here. We give X of this. So if one mole of this gives two more of the line for every one mole of this we are going to have two moles of this so for every 0.125 mole of this we are going to have 0 0.625 of this because if we multiply this by two it will give this so for every one mole this one produces give two more so which means i will have 0 0.0625 moles right of my measure i don't know if this is clear but what did they ask us to calculate in the question they said from the equation above the mass but we are getting the answer in moles and what is the formula for mass? We said mass from the formula I gave is mole times what? Molar mass. So, and what is the mole now? 0 0.025 times what is the molar mass? Can you see? We are giving already that's 24. So, let's see now 0 0.02625 times 24. And that's giving us 1.5 gram. Can you see? Giving us 1.5. 1 1.5. I don't know if this is clear. So you can see where we started from. We have to calculate for ACL first. Then we got 0 0.125. Can you see that now? Then from 0 0.125, we have to come to say one mole of magnesium is two moles of ACL. So 0 0.125 moles of ACL will give X of this. And that will give 0 0.125 divided by 2. Can you see that? Because 2 times X here will be 2 X. Can you see? 0 0.125 times 1 will be 0 0.125. So the Bible said we are going to get this. The mole times molar mass will give us 1.5. I want to believe this is clear. This is a very simple calculation. Understand what to do, apply it the right way, and you're going to get the answer. Very simple. 
So the next one is what mass of K to C have to go for is required to prepare 250 centimeter cube of 0.02 mole per day solution. Can you see that? What mass? Same thing. What mass? So from here, I can still use my amount in moles, which is what? Concentration times volume over 1000. Can you see that? This is the volume and this is the concentration. These are what is the, they have given me there. So what is the concentration now? Is 0.02 times what is the volume? 250. You can see the 250 is the centimeter key. So I need to divide by what? By 1000. So let's go. 0 0.02 times 250. And that will give us what? That will give us 5. 0 0.02 times 255, then divide 1000. That will give us what? 0 0.005. Can you see? Moles. Can you see that now? But what did they ask us to calculate? Mass. So what do we do? We can say our mass is equal to mole times what? Times molar mass. Same thing we have done. So which means that will be 0 0.05 times molar mass. Are they giving us? Yes. They said it's 194.2. That be 194.2. So let's do times 194.2. And that's giving us 0 0.971. Approximately 0 0.971. So this is the answer, okay? This is the answer. I want to believe this is clear. I want to believe we are getting something here. So just pay attention to all these things and try to apply them. They are not difficult, guys. They are not difficult. Just try to apply them and you see you have gotten the right answer. So try to apply them. So number four. Now, number four. 16.8 gram of sodium hydrogen trisocarbonate Four is completely decomposed. Now you have to this one now. You have to understand reactions. I've done these things on my channel. Sodium hydrogen trisocarbonate. That's NaHCO3. When it decomposes, what we give you? Na2CO3 plus H2O plus CO2. Nobody is going to give you this in jam. We expect you to know this. And I've done all this on my channel, so you can check it. Then we can balance the equation now. Sodium is two here, so we can put two here. Two sodium, two sodium balance. Carbon is what? Is two. Then carbon is one, one balance. Then oxygen is what? Oxygen. Hydrogen is two, two. Hydrogen is two balance. Oxygen is then six. Then three, four, six. That's balance. I want to believe this is good. So the last step is completely decomposed by it. Calculate 16.8 of this. Of this, 16.8 of this. Can you see that? It's completely decomposed by it. Calculate the volume of carbon four oxide giving off at STP. Can you see that? And I've said that one mole, one mole of a substance as at STP is what is 22.4 dL. So how do we go about this? So let's go now. Let's see this. So from here, according to this equation of reaction, I'm calculating a mass now. According to this equation of reaction, what is the mass of this that will liberate this? What is the mass of this that will liberate this? So from here, I can say 2 into bracket sodium is 23 plus hydrogen is 1 plus carbon 12 plus 16 times 3, right? So from here, what I'm going to get is equal to CO2, but let's get this first. 16 times 3, that will be 48 plus 12, okay, plus 24, that's 84 times 2. Okay, this is giving us 168, can you see? So this is giving us 168 gram of this. 168 gram of this will give us what volume of this at STP? I've been forgetting that CO2 is a gas. And 168 gram of this will give us, this is one mole of CO2. And one mole of CO2 at STP is what? It's 22.4 DMP. Do you see that? Because we have one mole of CO2 here. So, from the equation of reaction, 168 gram of this will give 22.4 dm cube of this, which is the same thing as one mole of this. Do you get that? It's the same thing as saying 168 gram will give one mole of CO2. But we are not we are not dealing with CO2 as per mole. We are dealing with CO2 as per molar volume because of this that is stated in the question. I want to believe this is clear. So if one 168 gram gives 
22.4 DMP. Then 16.8 they gave. We give what? We give X. Can you see that now? I don't know if some people are getting it. I have to look for 168 gram. It's just like I'm saying two moles. Look at this. It's just like I'm saying two moles of this gave one mole of CO2. Do you see? But I'm not expressing this one in mole again. Because what they gave me in the question is mass. Do you see? Because if I'm express, expressing this one in mole, I can still convert back to mass. I will still get 168. But because I want to be, you know, faster, I have to not use mole. So I'm expressing this in terms of mass. So two moles of this is the same thing as saying 168 gram of this. I want to make that scale. It goes to, you know, this is one mole of CO2. But I'm not calculating in terms of mole. They ask me to look for volume of CO2. And one mole of CO2 is still 22.4 GMP. Can you see that? So I'm replacing this with this because I'm calculating for volume. And also, they now say 16.8, according to the question now, 16.8 gram of this. We now need what volume of this. So from there, I can now just cross multiply to say X. We now have 16.8 times 22.4. Divide 168. I want to do this square. So from there we have 16, sorry, 16.8 times 22.4 divide 168. And that gives me 2.24 dm. And where is the answer? This. Why is that? 2.24 dm. And that's the answer. You know, that's the reason why I said. Questions of stereometry can come in any form, can come in any format. You just have to understand the question, go through those formulas I have given you, understand the question, try to solve questions yourself. I don't want to see your, your comments in the comment box section. Let me know how far you are you, you, you got this very particular topic and try some questions yourself, okay? So that you will see how confident you are, you know, solving those questions. So stereometry can come in different formats. More questions can come in different form, but understand what I have done and understand the formulas I have given that you will be able to lay your hand on around 75% of questions or more. And I want to believe really that is clear. If you are writing jam, I've said that before, you are interested in the organic chemistry live class that is going on, I'm going to put a link in the comment box section for jam by strictly. You are writing jam this year and you want to be, you want, you want to partake in the jam organic chemistry class that is going on. I'm going to put a link in the comment box section. When you, you when you click the link, you chat me or you chat the person that is in charge. Then they will tell you what to do to be particular of the class. That is for Jamba. Now for my ex student, I've said that before. By next week, I'm going to be uploading next week or next two weeks. I'm going to be uploading a video that will explain a lot of things about practical. Why ex students still take practical exams for granted? And can I shock you? If you have, if you did not do your practical well, getting A1 or a B2 in those practical, either chemistry, physics, or biology will be difficult. So I'm going to be explaining a lot of things as per chemistry practical, how to answer it, how to not make some silly mistakes. I'm going to be uploading that video. Then after that, I'm going to be dropping a link. That's if I've done that video, I'm going to be dropping a link that all YX students can join. Science students, you're taking physics, chemistry, biology, you will join that group. And we're going to be showing you a lot of things about practical, okay? We're going to be showing you a lot of things about physics practical, chemistry practical, biology practical, how to answer them. We're going to guide you so that you know what to do so that you come out in flying colors. So when you see that video on chemistry practical, I'll be teaching you the secret to getting A1 in those practicals. When you see that video by next week, check the link. There will be a group that will be created and when you click it, you go to the group created for YX student 2024 and I want to believe this is very very clear so please pay attention to this channel if you have not subscribed to this channel you are writing jam, you are writing YX you are not doing yourself any good subscribe to this channel so that when I drop all these links and those videos you will be notified you need to turn on the notification bell so that when I upload these videos and I put all these links there you will be notified that I have dropped those videos and the link so till we are going to meet again, I want to say thank you so much for our subscribers. Thanks for your prayers. Those motivations are really, really helpful. And that's the reason why we are still here. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Till I'm going to meet you again on this channel. And for chemistry teachers, please, 
A lot of people have gotten access to that, and some people still ask me questions based on how to prepare laboratory reagents that are done for teachers. A lot of teachers have gotten access to it, and the review has been mind blowing. So, and as YEC is you know forthcoming, you as chemistry educators, as chemistry teachers, you'll be expert to prepare reagents. There are a lot of things you need to know about it. I need to understand that there are reports you will feel, and when you feel the, the wrong report, you are risking the life of those students because if you do not get an accurate value, it will affect what the children have titrated and their values to. So we as teachers too, we need to be, you know, we need to add more value to ourselves, we need to understand how to do this. And because of that, we have provided chemistry educators with videos on how to prepare laboratory reagent. It's still much available. If you know you are still finding, you know, preparing laboratory reagents and interpreting, you know, my reports very, very difficult, that video is for you. You can chat me up, you can check the comment box section, I'll drop the link here so that you know how to get the video. I love you guys. This is Chemistry Hangout. Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so. Till we'll be meeting again on this channel. Stay blessed. I love you. Thank you.